In this video, I'm going to show how to detect when a specific item is selected from a J combo box and then do an action. And in this case, it's going to be to enable a text field that the user can then enter. We'll start with our existing swing frame that we have here. And what I want to do is add a new entry for convertible, which is only going to apply if the user chooses Mustang. So I navigate to our form and add the components needed, a J label and a J check, uh, checkbox. You have to be a little bit delicate here because we have it on multiple layouts overlapping. So I have to make sure we get it just in the right place, which it looks like I did. Note that I've added a checkbox for convertible and I've named it CBX convertible and I'm going to change it to be disabled by default. We'll have it enabled only when the drop-down shows that we have a Mustang. So I go to our combo box, right-click, and I'm going to create listener. And we'll make this one an action listener, which means something has happened to the combo box. Now it gives us this action perform method, which is where we can check to see if the user selected Mustang. So let's refer to the combo box and then say get selected item because we know that this action event listener fired when the user changed the selected item. So if we want to see what the user selected, we simply invoke get selected item. Now that returns an object, but we know we actually have a string in there. It's a simple combo box. So two string is a simple way to get a string representation of that. And then we can say equals. And if you remember, we used a constant. As a matter of fact, let me show you. We used a series of constants to uh, create that combo box. There we go, right there. And one nice thing about constants is it's easy to compare them. So if the user selected whatever corresponds to driver.mustang in the dropdown, we simply compare it to driver.mustang. And if that label should change, it's going to change universally because we're only referring to it in one place, and that is that constant. So we simply say driver.mustang. Now let's wrap this all within an if test. Now let's refer to that checkbox and we'll simply say set enabled true, which means that the user can select it. If the user has chosen anything except for a Mustang, we change it to false. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to uncheck it here as well, so that we don't assume that something like a Sonic or a Prius could be a convertible. Also, we really shouldn't hard code this to Mustang. I mean, I know I'm introducing a bit of technical debt here, but we really should have some kind of type indicating that a car can have a convertible. Or an even better way that doesn't require if tests is that each of our subclasses, Mustang, Prius, Sonic, and whatever comes in the future, could have a method that returns what its extra attributes are. And then we simply look at that and we look at what we have on the GUI form and we say, okay, enable those things that are in common. So that's one way, but here we're just, we want to see how we can select an item from a checkbox and enable or disable that field. Now let's take a look at the form. You notice that convertible is not selected when I, or not selectable, when I choose Sonic. Prius, same thing. Mustang, now it becomes selectable and I can check it. Go back to Sonic and notice that it becomes disabled and I can't select it. Prius, once again, disabled. Mustang, enabled. So we have met our goal of conditionally enabling this field based on what's selected in the dropdown. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't actually wrap everything up and, and actually save the convertible as part of this uh, operation. And I'll admit this is messy because I need to do a cast here. But what I can do is in the action performed method of the button click for save, let's go ahead and check and see if this is a Mustang once again. And if so, we'll do a cast and then we will save the convertible selection to the Mustang. So simply copying and pasting that if test I did before. And if it is a Mustang, we do an ugly cast. I know I hate these things, but nonetheless, Notice we have the set convertible method on Mustang, and, and that works out well with our checkbox because we can just say, is it selected, which returns a Boolean. So it's, it's straight in, straight out. So let's go ahead, uh, snap a breakpoint here, and I'll also snap a breakpoint on our action listener down here. Let's run this one more time, but this time in the debugger. Now, when I select Prius, we'll step over and we'll notice that uh, Prius does not have a convertible option. So uh, that will simply bypass that and leave it unselected. Now, when I choose Mustang, uh, let's see, Mustang does have a convertible option. So it's going to enable that checkbox. We select it and now we say odometer, let's say 50,000 miles per gallon, 
20, gallons of gas, 15, convertible, yes. I go ahead and choose save. And now take a look. We're in the action performed listener for our save button. And we're going to say, is Mustang selected in that drop down? Yes, it is. Uh, by that time, vehicle should definitely be Mustang, but anytime we do a cast, we really want to check first. We find it is true. We do the cast. We set the property on the Mustang. And if we take a look down in our debugger, we should see vehicle. And we have miles per gallon 20, gallons of gas 15, odometer 50,000. And convertible is true. So we continue with that. So in this video, we've seen how to detect an item selected in a J combo box when that item selected change changes and then enable a conditional field based on that selection. As always, I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.